Actually, I'm, I'm actually just a very short uh, presentation. I'll just be uh, introducing a research topic. This is more into research. It hasn't been clinically used till now. Most of the research has started 1992 onwards. I'll just introduce what it is and uh, where, where is it used in psychiatry. One of the uh, fundamental questions in one of the fundamental questions in neuroscience is the binding problem. That is, how the brain codes and integrates its discrete network activities, including what all what we know as perception, cognition, and memory. The most of the attention that has focused recently on the candidate binding mechanism of gamma synchrony. That th those are high frequency oscillations in electrical brain activity typically 40 hertz, but usually it is taken from 30 to 70 hertz. That occurs synchron synchronously in cycle across the different brain regions. The, this synchronous cycling of gamma activity is perverted to underlie the integration of diverse brain activities and associated neuronal networks in our brain. Like, there are two theories, like there are actually multiple theories of how gamma is associated with consciousness and this network binding. Tarmo the Duto theory actually right now is sort of accepted. Acta theory holo discordant brain uh, processing that is different cheka uh, brain in different parts of the brain for one, like for example for one particular cognition task some cells in different parts of the brain they act synchronously and that perception gets done. This is one uh, theory and the another is the, uh, this is called as a grandmother cell theory. Jeta Gole, the across the brain continuously, these 30 to 70 hertz oscillations are going on. During some uh, cognitive tasks, uh, some neurons synchronously activate each other and one act gets done. Then during another task, another group of neurons, syn they synchronize with each other and uh, another cognitive task gets done. That is the grandmother cell theory for consciousness, like the binding of consciousness. And uh, gamma band is supports this uh, grandmother cell theory of binding of consciousness. Like uh, gamma is uh, measured right now by QEEG. Uh, this uh, gamma can exist spontaneously and or can be evoked or uh, induced with different latencies and relations to sensitive cognitive events. For example, like for a uh, for an auditory task, like for an uh, auditory paradigm may be given and gamma may be evoked. Then a cognitive task may be given and gamma may be evoked. Like it can be uh, measured spontaneously. It occurs spontaneously also in the brain and during a task. The spontaneous gamma rhythm contributes to at any given moment a fraction of the total energy of brain is uh, generating, and the induced gamma rhythm is a series of oscillations following the sensory stimulation that are not time locked to stimulus and evoked gamma is tightly time locked to the stimulus that is given. This type of gamma activity is recorded from the human scalp during stimulation with auditory clicks or flashing lights etc. This gamma can be observed at various levels of analysis by non-invasive recording like MEG or EEG. Gamma oscillation uh, can be studied mostly, most commonly it is studied in two parts. One is the amplitude or power, that is the magnitude of gamma activity at any given neuron. Or, and the another is the gamma synchrony, that refers to the extent to which this activity is in phase between pairs of individual neurons. It may, it may be in same hemisphere or it may be across hemispheres or across different parts of the brain. How much, this is the coherence the synchrony between uh, the gamma in two parts of the brain. The occurrence of spontaneous long range gamma synchrony in the cortex and its association with brain states characterized by conscious awareness like REM sleep, waking, these are seen that gamma is seen to be uh, uh, present during REM sleep, during awake state. So it is seen that uh, like even in REM sleep there is perception, it is dreaming. So, it, it, so that is why it has been uh, theorized that gamma may be the major basic uh, blocks of consciousness in our brain. This has led to much speculation that these oscillations might be related to the integration or binding of consciousness as I was saying the theories behind this. Conscious awareness might be unified 
by means of specially distributed synchronous oscillations across the plane. And this is measured by QEG as uh, we can measure the power or the coherence and it can be seen whether changes are occurring during a task or even spontaneously. Like, where is it uh, has little bit of significance in psychiatry? This disturbances in gamma activity has been noted in Alzheimer's dementia patients. Like there are studies which say that uh, healthy controls show a relative increase in left hemisphere gamma activity during verbal problem solving and in right hemisphere of gamma during arithmetic task. As compared to Alzheimer's disease patients where it is seen that their gamma power is less and coherence is also poor as compared to normal. So it has been theorized that like even psychopathology, it, they can be, uh, it, this is also one measure of how your brain is, func is functioning. Alzheimer's dementia patients were reported to show a disruption to this task-dependent lateralization of gamma activity as well as overall reduction in gamma. This is Alzheimer's. Then uh, gamma has been studied in ADHD patients also. It is seen this, that lateralized disturbances in gamma activity have been observed in attention deficit hyperactivity patients. Increased early gamma in left hemisphere is seen in unmedicated children with ADHD. And it has been theorized that this suggests that ADHD may be associated with an abnormal enhancement of arousal responses. So there is, uh, the, their uh, arousal is more. There is abnormal enhancement of responses to sensory stimuli. The gamma, uh, the, this is also one indirect way of so showing that gamma may have a modulated role in arousal and attention. Now, I'll just touch on uh, the disconnection hypothesis that we talk right now about the, the basis of the symptoms of schizophrenia. Like, uh, the neurodevelopmental models of schizophrenia are of two types. One is the early and another is late. The early developmental models propose that a defect is occurring early in life, which interacts over time with other essentially normal neurodevelopmental processes such as myelination and pruning to produce the misconnections which are thought to underlie the disorder in schizophrenia. This is the early neurodevelopmental hypothesis and the other is the late, uh, late neurodevelopmental hypothesis of schizophrenia says that the ongoing processes of brain maturation that continue well into adolescence are themselves abnormal in schizophrenia. In addition, so as uh, the early model says that there is defective pruning, so in addition to the defective pruning, there is this concept of neural Darwinism. That is, uh, I'll talk, I'll just tell, touch on what it is. The neural Darwinism may contribute to the long-term deterioration of cortical function in patients with schizophrenia. The brain, we all know that brain plasticity and connectivity are very closely related since the formation of connections is, active, is activity dependent. So neural Darwinism is uh, that uh, you know, uh, selection of the fittest. Neural, neural Darwinism postulates that there is competition of neural and population for particular functioning roles. So with synaptic connections that are not used, they get eliminated. So this also leads to the late, de late uh, de uh, neurodevelopmental th uh, processes that occurs in the development of psychopathology of schizophrenia. So, uh, where do we think of the basis that we talk is disconnection. The, there are connections, connectivity problems across various parts of the brains, which may lead to the formation of symptoms that occurs in schizophrenia. So, the disconnection is an inability to generate and maintain, like disconnection in gamma, is an inability to generate and maintain the distributed 40 hertz oscillations required for the integration of thalamocortical activity. This might be the effect of defective neural connectivity in schizophrenia. Athletic disconnection uh, syndrome is not only talked about in schizophrenia now. Now even in OCD, uh, the latest theories say that there is disconnections in uh, frontotemporal connections in the brain. Even in uh, late onset depression, there is disconnection. Like Disconnection as a base is right now uh, seen in, uh, theorized in various uh, development of psychopathology in various disorders in psychiatry. This uh, might result in impaired cognitive binding and the observed symptomatology of this disorder. 
a failure to synchronize these distributed gamma oscillations rather than merely a failure to generate them would likely to be the key. 